If you've been working with GraphQL long enough, you'll know about GraphQL Yoga, a batteries included GraphQL server that included subscriptions, support for uploads, and much more. It was created by GraphQL, a backend as a service GraphQL framework that no longer exists. GraphQL moved to Prisma, a database ORM, and GraphQL Yoga, well, that kind of went stale and a bit abandoned. Thankfully, the guild picked this project up. So 2022 is looking like a great year for building projects with GraphQL Yoga. The new GraphQL Yoga also integrates with Dino, Cloudflare Workers, ExpressJS, Fastify, Coa, Next.js, Velkit, and more. It works with both server and serverless deployment environments. Whoa. The guild are experts with GraphQL, and they have tons of different libraries to support and help you build with GraphQL. So it's great to see GraphQL Yoga now part of this. V2 hasn't dropped just yet for GA. However, there is active development and you'll need to use the add alpha flag when installing GraphQL Yoga. So let's quickly dive in and see how we can create a GraphQL server with GraphQL Yoga. Let's first begin by installing two dependencies. We'll need GraphQL itself, and we'll also need GraphQL Yoga. We'll need to add the add alpha flag as it's not yet released as v2. Then inside of our index.ts file, we are going to import create server from GraphQL Yoga. We'll then define some type definitions with a simple query type of hello, and that will return a string. We'll then define a resolver, which returns hello world. And then most importantly, we'll then create a server and we'll pass to create server the type definitions and the resolvers. Then lastly, all that's left to do is run server.start and we can provide a callback that will return to the console that the server has started. GraphQL Yoga follows a convention over configuration approach. So this means that the server will start on the default port of 4000. If we run npm start to invoke ts node, we can head on over to localhost 4000. Here we'll have a locally running version of graphical where we can run our query and see the result. Wow. If you already have a executable schema defined in your project, you can pass this to GraphQL Yoga. Simply pass the executable schema to the server as schema. Then if we start the server and make a query, it will work as it did before. Let's clean up our server and revert to passing our type definitions and resolvers. GraphQL Yoga comes with envelope baked in. This means we can pass an array of plugins to the server. Here we'll replace the execution part of GraphQL with the envelope use GraphQL JIT. Then once this plugin is installed in your project dependencies and added to the GraphQL Yoga server, when we make a query to GraphQL, the execution will go through GraphQL just in time. Because we use an envelope, we can take advantage of anything that happens before or after any of the lifecycle methods within the GraphQL execution phase. And we'll learn about those in another video. Yeah. GraphQL Yoga also comes with the ability to mask errors. He will install a node fetch and update our resolver to make a asynchronous call to our localhost. This endpoint doesn't exist, so it's going to return an error. And if we run the server, we should see this error in the graphical playground in the query response. Now, this kind of message is not something you typically want to surface to the user. So thankfully, GraphQL Yoga comes with the ability to mask these errors. We can configure them, we can change them, we can raise certain GraphQL errors, but by default, it will just protect us from exposing those by enabling masked errors as true. We'll learn about creating custom errors in another video. One of the other useful built-in features of GraphQL Yoga is the ability to create a PubSub bus here we're going to use server sent events and we can then publish and subscribe to this pub sub inside of GraphQL Yoga. All of the configuration is taken care of. All we need to do is define our mutations and the subscriptions in which we want to listen for any changes. So here I'll create a mutation to speak a word and then we'll create a subscription where we want to listen to who is speaking. Then to hook this up, all we need to do is define the mutation. This doesn't have to be a mutation. This is just an easy way to show and demonstrate how this works. But inside of here, we can call pubsub.publish, then pass in speak, and then the word that person is speaking. Then we can create the subscription resolver. And inside of here, we can subscribe to the speak pub sub bus, and then we can send whatever is sent as a payload back to GraphQL. And that will be sent using server sent events. Now, if we open graphical and look inside of the documentation explorer, we can see that we have the new mutation added as well as the subscription. 
Now if we open two instances of Graphical on localhost 4000, in one we can create a subscription which is listening for anyone who is speaking, and then inside of the second we can write a mutation, passing in a word, and we can see in the other window inside of Graphical that the subscription is constantly being updated with these server sent events. So there you have it, probably one of the fastest ways to create a GraphQL server using GraphQL Yoga. We'll learn about how to integrate GraphQL Yoga with all of the different frameworks in other videos.